Hello, everyone. Welcome to our talk, Resource Orchestration of HPC on Kubernetes, where we are now and the journey ahead. I'm Swati Segal. I'm a principal software engineer working for Red Hat. I'm Francesco Romani. I'm a principal software engineer working with Red Hat. We've been contributing to Kubernetes and OpenShift for accelerating and evangelizing telco features and requirements in the upstream community. Our team has been focused on resource management capabilities like Numa awareness, hyperthreading, and kubelet resource management. And uh, we, we aim to enable our customers and partners to run performance sensitive next generation workloads. In terms of the current landscape, even though we've been focused on telco, some of the problems that we have encountered and are trying to solve are not only relevant to telco, but also to other wide range of workloads. We believe that HPC workloads can benefit from some of the work that we've been doing. And, um, and that's why we're here. For the talk today, we would primarily be focusing on workloads that care about NUMA alignment of resources. We try to demystify some of the resource management concepts in Kubernetes. And our aim for the talk is to point you to the right direction, give you the right tools, and essentially allow you to get your hands dirty to enable NUMAware scheduler in your cluster. So for performance critical workloads, typically um, they have very strict resource requirement. So it is required that the resources such as CPU, memory, and devices be allocated from the same NUMA node for optimum performance. From resource management perspective within Kubelet, we have CPU manager, device manager, and memory manager that are responsible for allocating CPUs, devices, and memory or huge pages respectively. And topology manager gathers hints from resource managers and based on the configured policy, aligns them on the same NUMA node. Now, NUMA unaware scheduler. Even though we have the ability to align the resources at node level, the scheduler is not NUMA aware. We have a few challenges and pain points that need to be addressed. Some of those are, the first one is that the scheduler lacks visibility into resource availability on a per NUMA node basis. The second one is that the kubelet rejection loop can cause delays in pod life cycle. Especially for low latency workloads, this can be um, detrimental in the fact that, you know, it can impact the SLA um, and the performance of the workload itself. The third one is the unbounded amount of error pods that need to be cleaned up. Let's double click on each of these pain points to understand them better. The dynamics between topology manager and scheduler is very interesting here because in a way we now have two schedulers, the cube scheduler, which is the main one and the topology manager, which operates at a node level and is responsible for identifying the suitable NUMA node and allocating the resources, essentially acting like a mini scheduler within Kubelet. Since it is the responsibility of the scheduler um, to make sure that the pods land on the node and topology manager to allocate the resources, the scheduler has very less control over workload placement within the node and the subsequent resource allocation. In addition to that, it doesn't consider the topology manager policy configured on the node and whether or not those resources can fit on the same NUMA node. So essentially it can place a pod on a node where topology manager can simply reject it with the topology affinity error. Um, but unfortunately with the current design, we can do much better. The second pain point is, um, is related to the kubelet rejection loop. If a pod is part of a deployment or replica set, we have, uh, and we have the topology manager configured with a single NUMA node policy, we can end up with a runaway pod creation. The reason behind that is since um, nothing has changed on the node from resource perspective and the pod has failed at the admission time, the subsequent pods created by the replica set controller end up being placed on the same node uh, with the same fate uh, and we end up resulting in a runaway pod creation. This, uh, the third pain point is very closely related to the second one uh, where we have runaway pod creation. And essentially what happens is because of the runaway pod creation, we have a series of pods that need to be cleaned up even if eventually there's a pod that is up and running. The pods that fail continue to exist on the cluster itself. You might say that this is clearly a consequence of a split, split brain problem. We don't, um, why don't we get rid of topology manager, the so-called mini scheduler? 
The answer to that would be we theoretically could very well do that, but it's not that simple. In the current architecture, it is an intentional decision to keep the hardware implementation and information local to the node. And the resource managers within the kubelet take care of resource allocation and therefore topology manager was placed there. In addition to that, topology manager has been with us since Kubernetes 1.16 and it graduated to a beta feature in 1.18. And preserving the existing behavior and maintaining backward compatibility is not going to be, going to be trivial. With NumaWare scheduling design, we've been trying to um, make sure that we are taking incremental steps and have an evolutionary approach to come up with a solution that takes care of all these concerns. So let's dive into NumaWare scheduling now. Before we dive into the architecture, it's important to understand the use cases, uh, to understand the why behind all the work that we've been doing. So the first use case is workloads that require specialized hardware, and that's where HPC comes into picture. This includes HPC workloads that require FPGA, GPUs, and want NUMA alignment of the resources. There's another interesting use case where you might want alignment of multiple accelerators. Um, GPU direct scheduling, which, which came into light by YSAT, it basically requires multiple accelerators like GPU and NICs for direct GPU to NIC transfers over PCI instead of going through CPUs. And it was important that GPU, NIC, and the CPU all be allocated from the same NUMA node. The second piece here is the performance sensitive workloads. We've all heard about it, um, high throughput networking applications for containerized 5G deployments, like, um, like other uh, container networking functions. Uh, we run user plane where packets need to be processed with extremely high bandwidth, aligned with SRV virtual functions, huge pages and CP resources uh, to make sure all of them kind of are aligned. Um, the third piece is applications that are sensitive to TLB misses. These are applications that have large memory working set or sensitivity to memory access latency. Examples of this includes database management systems like MySQL, Oracle, and uh, packet processing systems like DPTK. So now we'll dive into the NumaWare scheduling solution and how it can be enabled into Kubernetes. It's very important to expose the resource information with NUMA node granularity to the scheduler and impart the intelligence to make use of the information provided to make uh, a NUMA aware scheduling decision. We, we have enabled this uh, in an out of T solution in Kubernetes, and there are three key components of the solution. The first one is uh, the new object node resource topology CRD. This is the CRD based API to capture the resource hardware topology of a node. So each node resource topology CR would correspond to a node in the cluster. The second one is the node resource topology updater agent. Um, we needed an exporter component that you know, runs as a daemon on the node and exposes resource information along with the NUMA node granularity. We introduced a component called NFD topology updater in node feature discovery to do that as NFD is a well-known node fleecing agent. We have another component called resource topology exporter, which was custom built for NUMAware scheduling. In addition to this, you could create your own custom built exporter, but you have to make sure that uh, it conforms to the API. The third piece is the scheduler plugin. Um, we leveraged the scheduler framework to create a scheduler plugin that implements filter and score extension points to enhance the scheduling process and make the scheduler more intelligent. Now, in terms of the end-to-end -end solution, we have the node resource topology API. Um, we have the topology updater agents, um, and they use the pod resource API to gather information of the allocated resources and the NUMA nodes those allocated resources were come from. Um, and this is done to determine the per NUMA available resources. These, this information is essentially exposed uh, as CRs and it's available via the Kubernetes API. So now when a pod comes to the Kubernetes API server, you essentially have the topology aware scheduler plugin uh, that comes into picture. It uses the CRs that's available via the API. 
and it makes a topology where scheduling decision by running a simplified version of topology manager alignment algorithm. Uh, it's important here that uh, we understand that topology manager still runs its al alignment logic at a node level and it performs the admission check uh, for the pod. But what we are trying to do is being proactive and imparting the scheduler intelligence and empowering it to make the right scheduling decision. Now I'll hand over to Francesco to cover the next part of the presentation where we'll double click on each of these components and cover them in more detail. Over to you, Francesco. Thank you, Zwati. So let's cover the, uh, the, the components we, we just talked about in a bit more detail and let's see what comes next in terms of roadmap. And last but not least, let's cover how to get involved in this initiative. So, uh, the node uh, resource topology object is uh, an external object being a custom resource definition, which, uh, like you mentioned, corresponds to one node or on, on the cluster. So you have one one relationship between node objects and node resource topology objects. Uh, what we found in this uh, find in this object is the counters for uh, for each number zones, for, for each resource uh, known by Kubernetes about the capacity, the lockable and the available units for each resources. And then we'll see in a little while what, what they actually mean. So let's start with uh, an example, uh, of a real world example about uh, another resource topology. So we'll have, we want to highlight, first of all, the, no, the name of the object, which matches the name of the node, uh, which this object refers to. And so it's very easy to cross correlate between node objects or node, nodes in general and node resource topology objects. And then we have the uh, topology manager policy because this allows the plugins to make further logic and about the, uh, what's actually running at node level. And in this, in this case, it's also important the scope, which is also encoded in the policy, the scope of topology manager. And then we have the zones, which represent uh, each Anuma zone. Each Numa zone has a name which is unique on the node. So zones on different node can have actually the same uh, name. And then we have the resources. So for each resource known to Kubernetes, we have the resource name and the counters associated with that resource. Uh, the first of them is the capacity, which uh, represents how many of those resources are actually physically present on this zone. And then you have the allocable, because you may very want to reserve some of these resources for other tasks or in general to not be available to uh, the kubelet. So examples are, for example, CPU and memory to reserve to system demons for the node to work uh, properly. So we have the allocable, which is a subset of the capacity. And we have available units, which is how many of the allocable units are actually ready to be assigned versus already taken by workload running on this node, on this new zone. Uh, worth mentioning, CPUs are referred as a wall because the one single core, one single CPU, considered a synonym, is the minimum amount that could be exclusively allocated by the CPU manager. Last, we have the costs, which are the NUMA distances as um, reported by the Linux kernel. Can we just extend the node object? Well, it's not that straightforward for a bunch of reasons. Uh, the most important ones is, first of all, uh, this is a very specific information we may want to have uh, separated by the basic node object, which uh, is widespread and part of Kubernetes API. So we can also restrict the access to this information and in general, only the clients that wants to access this information may access those objects versus requiring them to, uh, to access the bulkier node objects. And nodes are bulky indeed, so adding even more data is not straightforward and arguably not the obviously better approach. However, we are exploring options and we are keeping the conversation open about the best way to expose this information in general and to make part of the core Kubernetes API. So this conversation is still in progress. We mentioned it. Previously, the topology updater agent, which is the component running on each node, you are interested to expose the per NUMA uh, resource allocation and availability. So we have one topology updater agent as uh, probably running as a daemon set on each, on each worker node. And this 
agent needs to have authoritative information about the resource availability and the current allocation. And the authoritative source is the kubelet because the kubelet is the orchestrator and the kubelet is the one which uh, 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 allocates resources on a node basis, thanks to the topology manager and the resource manager. So the topology updater agent talks to the kubelet, queries the kubelet using the pod resources API, which gained support over the last few releases to expose NUMA locality about the uh, resources uh, associated with pods. The pod resources API is node local, so it's very fast. But uh, And the topology update agent queries periodically and uh, uh, arranges this information per resource base, per NUMA, ba per NUMA basis, and updates the objects, the node resource topology objects. But we can also introduce some notification mechanism to have the topology update agent, update agent up, react quicker, in a quicker way. The one example of this notification mechanism we are exploring and trying it out is, for example, plugging into Cryux. So when a workload, when a container requiring exclusive resources starts up, the topology update agent can be notified and in turn query again the kubelet and get up to date state. Why do we need a new component to do this task? Um, we need for two main reasons. First of all is at this point in time, the node resource topology is a separate object. So it's even more evident that it could be a good idea to have a separate component taking care of this uh, object explicitly. So it's very easy to enable or disable. But it's, the, it's not enough to just expose the initial state of the node because there is a tighter coupling and, and a tighter need to re for reconciliation between the node resource topology object and the scheduler plugin. Because there is an uncertainty factor, which is unfortunately unavoidable about where the allocation is taking place because of the split brain thing we, we just mentioned, we just described. In other words, the, to the topology manager, the, then the kubelet guarantee that the workload is uh, get either all the resources aligned on anuma zones, but is not known beforehand which anuma zones, or th this workload is rejected. So you can you cannot predict on which anuma zone the workload is going to land. So you cannot really do accurate accounting. You can only learn after the fact, and this is caused by the fact that the topology manager does the kubelet as the ultimate authority on the placement. This means that we need to reconcile more frequently the scheduler state with NUMA, uh, per NUMA counters and the node state represented by the node resource topology objects. And of course, this is a performance and scalability concern, which we are actively exploring and improving. And we'll cover that, uh, our plans about that in a little while. Last but not least, we cannot just override the topology manager because it has to have the ultimate word and about the placement because it has the most authoritative uh, picture about the exact node allocation. So the, the scheduler cannot and probably should not, even if it could, drive the topology manager decision. So we will have this uncertainty factor to deal about and we'll have the reconciliation need. Now, now that we have the data about the per NUMA resource availability and capacity, and we have an agent which keeps this information, export this information and keeps this information fresh. We can build the scheduler plugin which consume this information. Um, it's the, we have right now two plugins which already got merged in the scheduler plugin main repository under Kubernetes 6. And the two of them are the filter plugin, which filters out from the later processing stage, filters out nodes which we are very confident, we are sure they cannot provide aligned, uh, aligned resources to the workload requiring them because of how the resources are already occupied on that node on the, at the NUMA level. So if the filter plugin rules out a node, we are sure that node was unsuitable, is not suitable. We also have the score plugin, which provides the well known. Uh, scoring function and scoring policy like uh, least, allocable, least allocated and most allocated on with NUMA guarantees. How does improves the pain points we mentioned previously? First of all, with the filter plugin alone, ruling out 
the node which cannot accommodate the workload with the requirements the workload have and with the alignment the workload needs, we can minimize the topology affinity error. We cannot say, unfortunately, removes completely because the uncertainty factor, because the fact we need to reconcile with the ultimate, the scissor, which is the cubelet. However, we can greatly improve this scenario and we can then have more predictable behavior Mort mentioning that some uh, workload type, like for example, containerized network functions and 5G uh, telco workloads also kind of expects this kind of uh, numaware scheduling. So this is a way for us to cover this gap. How can we try out this, all the components we described, we talked about? We have a GitHub organization, the links are in the slides, which is, um, which contains all the repository for the components we are developed. So for example, we have the Nord Resource CRD definition and the auto-generated Go client. We have, uh, we've, we mentioned that the shader plugins are, have already been merged. We have the Node Resource uh, topology data agents. Node feature discovery got uh, support for updating in 010. We have the resource topology exporter on which we experiment new stuff. And when we are confident it's good and it's ready, we send changes or we propose changes to another feature discovery. We have pre-built container images for RT in this uh, .io repository linked in the slides. Same in the organization, we also have repository documentation and we also have manifests, which also encodes not just how do you actually deploy the components, but which components which goes with other components. So you have the set we test and tried. And so for example, version A of the API goes with version B of the scheduler. So you know this version goes well together and this information is encoded in the manifest linked in the slides. We built a set of Go packages to work uh, nicely, to work programmatically with all these components, to install, to manage them. And we built a tool called deployer, lacking a bit creativity here, uh, to actually exercise those packages and actually deploy those components in any Kubernetes cluster. This command line tool is available as binary releases, is again uh, linked in the slides. And this, uh, this tool is not just a demo, but something we actually use and we, uh, we generate the manifest we mentioned previously out of it. And last but, but not least, this tool can also, this tool, and Go uh, packages toolkit can also validate the cluster, meaning checking the configuration and ensure it, it is compatible with the not the uh, not numaware scheduling settings. For example, is the topology manager well configured? Is the CPU manager well configured? And things like this. We built so oh, actually a subset of us built an operator and uh, on top of the generic and reusable Go, uh, Go packages toolkit and Meshnet. This uh, operator is wants to be Kubernetes compatible, so nothing specific about uh, any distribution. However, we depend on the machine config operator because it's much more convenient to manage node with that. But that's actually the main and only requirement. And this operator, however, has more opinionated settings about how the numaware scheduling look, look, will look like, should look like, while the uh, deployer toolkit we mentioned are more generic. This operator is also available on OpenShift. Now we can we head towards the conclusion. So let's wrap up. What's in our future? We want to actually investigate and invest and explore how we can reduce the need to reconcile scheduler plugin and the state of nodes. And this goes in the form of the reserve plugin we are experiment with and we aim to bring forward in the next months. Also in the next months, we want to keep enhancing the NFD component to update uh, the topology um, information. And we will be sending changes and uh, updating the code base in the next months. And we will keep the conversation open about better integrate, how to integrate all this data and the components in the core Kubernetes, possibly having native objects. Should you want to participate in this conversation, the best place is the batch working group, which gathers experts and participants for uh, of all the related six like apps, node, and scheduling. So the batch working group uh, Slack channels is the best way to get in touch to and talk about this uh, work. Uh, most of us also hang out on six specific Slack channels and communities like node and scheduling. There is also a dedicated Slack channel, very low traffic about uh, this 
initiative. So if you want to ask questions or propose changes or discuss very focused uh, uh, topics about this initiative, this is also a good choice. Again, we have the link to our own GitHub organization, which holds the code, uh, all the code and the documentation repos for all the things we mentioned. We are very welcome to file issues and send PRs. With that, we are done. We covered uh, our work and we thank you for attending to our session and we are very happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.